Warhammer 40k Battle Report, Tyranids vs. Dark Angels. Hey everyone, welcome to another J vs. J Tactical Battle Report, something like that as they're called. As always, my name is Jay. Today I will have a treat for you, 1500 points, Tyranids vs. Dark Angels. Deathwing as always, I promise one day I'll start feeling Ravenwing or Greenwing or other things besides Deathwing. I just like Deathwing against Tyranids, a bunch of different models for Tyranids. I'm going to try a bunch of different other models, see which one's you know really fun, which one's kill, which one's, you know, die. Exactly. Tyranids. Good. And we'll be playing 1500 points of uh, Emperor's Will. And it's going to be not normal Dawn of War deployment, which is pretty cool. And as always, I must stress that no dice rolls are rigged. Nothing is rigged. I'm not trying to make one army win over the other. I'm trying to sound tactics on both. See what happens. You know, dice rolls determine themselves, essentially. So it's pretty cool stuff. And uh, yeah, by the way, today, uh, you'll be noticing my new terrain. It is by Greenleaf Terrain. If you really want to check out Greenleaf Terrain, go to greenleafterrain.com and check it out. The terrain is awesome, and I'll be using it for the first time in this battle report. I'm excited, super excited. So without further ado, we'll get to the armies and the deployment. All right, so we'll start off with 1,500 points of Dark Angels. Now, I know I'm running a lot of, of Deathwing. Eventually, I will run Ravenwing or Greenwing. I promise I have them. Just got to paint up the rest of them because I don't want to show the army if it's not, you know, mostly painted or entirely painted. So, leading my army, of course, is Belial, Thunderhammer, Stormshield. Four squads of Deathwing Terminators. Everything is WYSIWYG. So, three of them have assault cannons. One of them has a missile launcher. And, of course, a Land Raider Redeemer. Awesome stuff. So it's going to be Land Raider Redeemer. It has a Melta gun on top and extra hull. You know, I basically kitted it out entirely. So it's going to be a lot of fun today. Let's see how these guys fare against the Horde of Nids. And next we have 1,500 points of Tyranids. Look at all of them. Leading my army, of course, the Hive Tyrant. His psychic powers that he knows. He knows the horror, I'm pretty sure. He knows, uh, no, sorry, Psychic Blast, Warp Blast and Paroxysm. So no catalyst there. Tyranid Prime, Bone Swords, Toxin Sacks. Two squads of three warriors with Toxin Sacks. Squad of three Hive Guard. Squad of Venom Thropes. One Zone Throat by himself will hopefully try to pop that Land Raider. Two Molochs. They're always fun, especially against Deathwing Terminators. They kind of eat them for breakfast. And two squads of 20. I repeat, 20 Hormigons with Toxin Sacks. So a lot of poison. Oh, sorry, and the Hive Tyrant has two as wings. Two sets of twin linked devourers, toxin sacks. Yeah, he's gonna crunch things. Let's see what happens. So that is 1,500 points of Tyranids. And let's see how they fare against the Deathwing. So here's what the battlefield looks like after deployment. As you can see, Dark Angels took a relatively simple approach. One squad of Terminators and a Land Raider near the objective. And by the way, as I mentioned, check out the terrain. The terrain in this tutorial was made by Greenleaf Terrain in Welland, Ontario, Canada. So if you want some awesome terrain, go to greenleafterrain.com. Great stuff with the terrain. It's gonna be fun today. And the Tyranids, look at all them. High Tyrant in the back, so and throw covered by everyone. Venom throw giving everyone cover saves. Hormigons ready to move up. Their objectives over there, ready to be guarded by the, the Tyranid warriors. And yeah, it's gonna be fun stuff. Tyranids have first turn, and as we mentioned, we're playing Emperor's Will. So, we'll see what happens in Tyranids Terminal. Do the Dark Angel Seize. Nope. Tyranids Turn 1. Tyranids Turn 1. So the tactical portion, while the Hormigons move up. Basically, the Tyranids wanted to go first because a uh, you wanted to get that first movement done. That way you can spread out. Make sure you get to where you want to be for purposes of cover. And you just close a little bit more of the gap before the Dark Angels. The Dark Angels are going to have the first strike. That's pretty much established since they're deep striking Terminators. And you don't know what turn they're coming in. Probably turn one. Usually it's turn one. But, uh, so that's the thing. So they're going to get first shots no matter what. So you want to get an extra turn of movement. So you can get farther down the table. And uh, that way... Exactly. Close the gap, and you limit more of the space. You don't give them as much of space to deep strike into. Other Hormigons, doing the same thing. Gonna move up. Technically, right now, I could've, could've just combined their run moves, but it's okay. For purposes of movement, I guess we should do them separately. Venom Thropes, we're gonna move up as well. That way, we can give cover to 
every all those armor gods around them. Tyranny Warrior and Primes are going to move four inches into cover. And look at them, now they're guarding that objective. Zone throw, move up. Pretty straightforward. Hive Guard, moving up behind. That's the thing about Tyranids. Basically, you gotta, you're forced to kind of move in one giant blob due to the new rules of Synapse from the 6th uh, the edition codex. You gotta keep everyone in coherency, that way everyone can function normally. Hive Tyrant, you're gonna fly! And land there. Basically, now that there's a fly range in the opponent zone, you bring the fight to them as well, and that's a great thing. Plus, he has Warp Blast. Let's see what he can do to the Land Raider. Maybe he'll do something. Psychic phase. How many dice does the Tyranid player get? Five plus two for the Hive Tyrant plus two for the Zone Throw. Sorry, make that one for the Zone Throw. So eight dice total. So the Hive Tyrant is going to try to use five dice to cast Warp Blast on the Razor, on the Land Raider. Five four ups. And it doesn't even go off. Failure. Hive Tyrant's going to remain, use the remaining three to cast Dominion. Goes off with one. Dark Angels are going to use the five dice, and they deny the Dominion. Just for fun, and to be a jerk. So that's the end of the second phase. Shooting phase. Pretty much no shooting, because there's nothing to shoot at, so running. Hormigons are going to run. Six inches. Uh, they're going to reroll that, because of fleet. Nine inches. Lots of running. Other Hormigons are going to run. One inch. Going to reroll that. Six plus three. Nine inches. Wow. And just so you don't know, they get D6 plus 3 inches because of their bounding leap rule. Venomthropes are going to run. 3 inches. Warriors running. 5 inches. Hive guard. 1 inch run. And here's what the board looks like after the Tyranids turn 1. So as you can see, some of the Hormigods ran into cover to take advantage of the cover slash Venomthrope power of Shrouded. Everyone else is just getting Shrouded, basically. Everyone just moved up and ran. Tyrant moved up, failed some psychic powers. Awesome's us there. And Tyranid Prime is over here on top of the objective. And he's going to guard the objective, of course, because the Deathwing are going to come in probably next turn. So we'll see what happens in Deathwing. Turn one. Dark Angels, turn one. So, of course, for tactic purpose, you want the Deathwing to come in turn one, because that way they can salt in turn two and start eating stuff for breakfast. So Belial's going to deep strike there. He doesn't scab. <laughs> And that's the way they land, and that the reason is for this tactic purposes, they want to go for that objective. This is probably the strongest squad in the Dark, An in the Dark Angels army, right? Because it's Belial. So, might as well go for that objective, force these guys, and these guys probably come back and go for the squad. Second guy's going to try to land there. Where does he end up? And he ends up... Hits directly. Next one's going to try to land here. It's a risky spot. But, uh, it will pay off if it works. Where does it end up? Scatters nine inches that way, but it shouldn't miss out. So, now that everyone's deep struck on the table, basically, right now, the Dark Angel's tactic is to drop in behind the enemy lines, force them to go backwards, because Tyranids aren't that fast. Well, they do have like, fleet for those guys, but they're not that fast. So by forcing them to come back, it, it helps keep the fight away from their objective over there. And plus, now they can choose what they want to go for, and they're probably going to go for the Zoanthrope. The reason being is it's a single model. It only has two wounds. It has a three-up involve, but still, if it fails two three-up saves it dies and then on top of that it's first blood which is important in emperor's will and it is basically one of the only two things that can pop that land raider the the uh flying hive tyrant and that are the only two things that can basically pop this land raider other than you know a smash attack by one of the incoming Molochs. so basically it's a good thing to take out early in the game plus it's synapse by taking it out you take out the synapse it's good to pick on the synapse creatures of the tyranid army and the land raider is going to move up because it wants to flame some Hormigons, and it's going to get to, hopefully, if it can reach. Actually, on second thought, it's going to move up the full 12 inches. That way, it can uh, really flame some gods. It'll only be able to fire one of them, but look at this. Closes the gap like that, and now we'll have a, a nice, tasty section of gone. Plus, as I mentioned, there's only a couple things that can actually hurt the Land Raider other than, you know, the Warp Blast from him, so we'll see what happens. Uh, in there, so it's good to flame some guns. Shooting phase. They're going to shoot at the Tyranid Warriors. Trying to whittle them down, remove the synapse, take over that objective. So, first, the four assault cannon shots. Twin linked because the turn they landed in. All hit. And two wounds. Four wounds. There was also Rend in there, but it's four cover saves anyway for being in relic, uh, being in ruins. So four cover saves. 
All made it. Good job, Tyranid Warriors. And the eight. Storm Bolger shots. Twin linked once again. It's the turn they come in. It's twin linked. All hit. And uh four to wound. Wow. Six wound. Six four up armor saves. Failed two. So one wound left on the closest Tyranid Warrior. These guys are going to try to kill the Zoanthrope. Four assault cannon shots. Needing threes. Twin linked. All but one hit. Two to wound. Three wounds. Three three up in balls on the Zoanthrope. Failed one already. Eight storm bolter shots. Twin linked. All hit. And. Four to wound. Only one wound. Three up. He's okay! So now they're gonna have to focus their firepower on the remaining Zoanthrope. If they can kill him, it's first blood and minus the Psyker, and minus the Psychic Point, so it's a good thing to take him out. First is Twinling Missiles. One hit, Twin Linked. All hit, both hit. And two's to wound. Both wound. Two, three up in balls. And he is double killed. Ouch. Zoanthrope is killed, and that is first blood! So. The Land Raider is going to fire using Power of the Machine Spirit. It's Flamer at the Gaunts, but it's going to fire its multi melta and twin linked Assault Cannon at the High Tyrant since it's already snap firing anyway. Might as well go for it. So first the Flamer can hit six Gaunts, two's to kill. No saves allowed because it goes through cover. One, two, three, four, and five dead. Next the multi melta at the Flyrant. multi melta misses. Twin linked Assault Cannon at the Flyrant, sixes. One hit on the first round. Twin linked. No hits on second. Uh, forced to wound. No wound. And that's it. No assault phase because uh, no one can assault this turn. As I made that mistake last turn and I just need the table. So after Dark Angels turn one, here's what the battlefield looks like. Giant scoping view of the battlefield. So right now, basically, they killed the zone throw for first blood. That's about it, and they killed a few guns with the flamer. Besides that, not a lot has happened. They can't assault, because of course you can't assault the turn you come in. I would never make that mistake. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Oops, sorry about that in the, one of the previous battle reports. And uh, yeah, besides that, now it's time for the Tyranids to... Uh, the Molochs are going to come in, but the way that they've dropped in the Terminators would be highly risky for the Molochs, but they might as well try. You know what, that's what they're good for. And so the Molochs want to come in this turn and eat some tier, uh, some term Terminators. And it looks like the Tyranids are going to have to turn around at least in some points and go for the uh, go for the Dark Angels. So we'll see what happens in Tyranids. Turn two. Tyranids, turn two. Do the Molochs come in? One does, one does not. So the Moloch is going to try to land right on top of them. And it ends up... Ooh, seven inches backwards. So it lands there, and the Moloch will be able to come in. Oh look, there's a Moloch. Hey, where'd that Moloch come from? Movement phase. Here's the bit of tactical for you. So, you gotta deal with these guys. You have to deal with them, because they're gonna be nasty on the objective. So the key is, you have two choices. You either you know, bring your Tyranid Warriors out of out of cover, but they don't have grenades, so they're gonna be striking initial one and gonna get eaten alive by these guys. So the better option is, throw the Hormagons at them. Hormagons get so many more attacks and we'll just whittle them away. Because they will hit, they'll get three attacks each, hitting on fours, wounding on fours. But still, that is going to be a lot of wounds to deal with and that will eat them for breakfast. So send the Hormagons at them now and that way get them out of the way and tie them up while you can keep scoring your own objective. Over here is a different story. Once again, the Hormagons probably have to go for these guys. They have to get out of cover and they have to, you know get over here and deal with these guys. You probably will have to send those Tyranid Warriors over here because there's going to be nothing to deal with them and the next turn they're just going to go and eat that Moloch for breakfast because Moloch won't be able to do anything. So uh, unfortunately you got to pull back your resources and deal with these guys while keeping your Flyer over there. Maybe he'll be lucky and pop that Land Raider. Movement phase. Since they're not in cover, they're just going to turn around and come right back for the Terminators. Once again, deal with the Terminators with the, the light Sorry, with a nice, cheaper infantry that are really, really good at just getting a lot of attacks and taking them out. Hiveguard is going to turn around. Actually, they are going to move through cover. Oh my god, going to go five inches that way. 
And look at them go. Essentially, as I said, you've got to deal with the Terminators now, because if you don't assault them, they will have rain to run around and shoot stuff. Their shooting is pretty powerful. Of course, you get cover saves against everything galore because of the Venom ropes alone. But still, you want to deal with them now, get them out of the way, and then uh, these amount of attacks, maybe it'll do something to those Terminators. They should be able to kill a few of them, at least. The Hive Guards are going to move up to maybe try to glance the uh, the Land Raider over there. Tyrion Warriors are going to turn around and come right back for them. So, got to deal with the Terminators now. The Terminators will probably kill them. But they might be able to take a few of them out first, and that's what they want to do. They got to sacrifice themselves to go for them. First blood's already been drawn, so they can throw all their attacks at them and hopefully be able to take a few down. The Venomthropes are going to move back a little bit, just to keep giving cover to all these guys. And usually I keep them all flying around, but this time I'm going to make Hive Tyrant go back into jump infantry. That way he doesn't have to keep flying in the same direction. He can just jump behind the tank and he can warp lance it and possibly just assault it if it survives. And that way uh, he can... Exactly, he can destroy that land raider. It's a huge, huge thing. Now that obviously the Terminators inside will be able to go for him, but he'll probably survive their attacks, all that shooting. And if they assault him, he gets to go first and he's pretty nasty in close combat. And again, he might die, and they might get Slay the Warlord, but you might get Slay the Warlord over here. And by taking them out over there, it prevents them from scoring their... Essentially, you want to get in between them and their objective. Psyche phase. How many dice do the Tyrants get? Three plus two, so five. He's going to use all five dice to try to destroy the Land Raider. War plants. Goes off with the perils. On the perils chart, what happens? A one. The scariest thing. So leadership check. If he fails this, he's gone. He's okay, so it just takes a wound. Three wounds left. So I need a three to hit. It hits. It pens! Good job! And it's a six. Plus one explosion! Good job! That was amazing! Distance of the explosion. Two inches. Six is to wound the Hive Tyrant. A wound on the Hive Tyrant. Three up armor save on the Hive Tyrant. He's okay. Four to wound the guys inside. To three wound. Three two up armor saves. And they're all okay. So no one hurts there. So they uh They're there now. Shooting phase. They're gonna try shooting at them, maybe weaken them up, remove one or two of them before they get assaulted. Nine shots. Oh, fours to hit. There's a few hits. Fours to wound. Two wounds. Two two up armor saves. One failed. Good shooting. Closest is dead. The hive tire, the hive guard are gonna shoot behind them. So, force to hit. Two hits, two to wound, two wounds, two two up armor saves. Nope, both succeed. Those guys who now fire their weapons at them. They need threes to hit. Nice shooting tex. Force to wound. A lot of wounds. Five two up armor saves. And one failed. So closest? Dead. Leader, dead. So that was a pretty uneventful shooting phase. Well, actually, we were able to kill one Terminator over there, one Terminator over here. So, weakens up. Now it's time to do all the assaults. Their Hive Guard are going to assault them. Overwatch. Two missiles. Twin linked. One hit. Two is to wound. Miss. No wound. Four Storm Bolter shots. So, uh, so eight Storm Bolter shots. Six is to hit. So two hits in the first wave. Twin linked because they deep struck in this turn. Two more. Three to wound. Two wounds. Two five up saves. We shrouded. Both failed. Close to two. Dead. Assault distance. Six. I'm gonna re-roll that one. Eight inches. Nice job. The Tyranid Warriors are gonna assault them. Overwatch. Four assault cannon shots. Twin links. Two hits. Two is to wound. Two wounds. Two cover saves. One failed. Six storm bolter shots. Sixes, two hits, fours, one wound, four up armor, he's okay. Distance assault, plenty. And they assault in, some of them have two wounds left, that one's at hole, this guy's at hole. So, I'll get their attacks in, but they're probably gonna die. They're now gonna assault them, overwatch. Four assault can shots, three hits in the first wave, none in the second, two is to wound. One wound. Five up cover. Failed. One. Dead. Six storm bolter shots. 
one hit on the first wave. Grab all the dice here. Now there's threes. No wound. Distance. Five. I'm going to re-roll those. And get nine. And that's plenty to get these guys in combat. So now it's going to see. This is going to... This one combat phase is just going to dictate a lot of the game. Because... We're going to have to see. We're going to have to see. It's going to be a lot of attack. So we'll do this combat first. So initiative five pile in. All the Hormigons get their pile in first, and they will be getting their attacks. Now this is pretty scary stuff. We'll see how many they can kill. So 13 attacks mean fours to hit. There's some hit. And four to wound, do the toxin attacks. Four wounds. Next wave, 13 attacks. Fours. And fours. Nice. And the final wave, four attacks. Fours. And fours. Nice. So a total of 14 wounds. Let's see how many Terminators die. I only see two. One there, and one there. So two Terminators are dead to all those attacks. And leader. And one of the guys is killed. Actually, next one. Him. So two Terminators are dead. Terminators strike back. Six attacks. Six attacks. Three's to hit. All hit. Two's to squish. All squish. So one, two, three. Four, five, six. So six Hormigons are dead. So they lose combat, but they are fearless due to being incident. This combat. Tyrion Warriors get to go first. So they get 12 attacks, needing threes to hit. Wow, all but one. And fours to wound, reroll due to Toxin Sacks. Holy moly. And reroll, Toxin Sacks. Not bad. So, this many armor saves. And two are failed. So two Terminators die. Closest. And closest are dead. So two Terminators get their attacks back. This will hurt. So four attacks, needing fours to hit. Only one hit. Two's to squish. One dead. So one of them is killed, has two wounds left. So they, it's a tight combat. But doesn't matter because they're fearless anyway. And finally this combat, Hormigons pile in at initiative step five. So they're all good to go first and get a lot of attacks. Let's see how many they can do to these Terminators. All right, so six waves and nine attacks. Let's go. So they need fours to hit, fours to wound. And fours. One from the first wave. Next wave attacks, fours. And fours. There's a few more. Wave three. Fours. And fours. None. Next wave. Fours. And fours. Four more. This wave. Fours. Fours. Wow. And final wave. And fours. Four more. So 17 two up armor saves. And uh, we'll see what happens. So first eight, or nine, sorry. Whoa, three already failed. And the next uh, eight. Whoa, six, three more. So six failed wounds. Wow. The closest, closest. One, two, three, four, because they got in contact with the one in the sandwich in the middle. And two wounds off Belial. That's as pretty much as good as they could have done, because only one wound left on Belial. They uh they kind of tore that squad a new one. Good job, Hormigons. Belial gets the three attacks back. Threes. One hit. Twos. One dead. One Hormigon is killed. But that was a pretty big loss for the Dark Game. Well, uh, this sucks. So that was a crazy bloodbath of a turn. That was insane. And I don't even know what's going to happen next turn, because that is just crazy amount of stuff. So, what happened over here? This combat, uh, they were able to kill two of them. They lost a bunch, so who knows who's going there. This combat, they killed one uh, Tyranid warrior, and two. And there's only two Terminators left, so there's going to be a lot of attacks there left next turn. We'll see what happens there. Over here was the crazy one, where the Hormigons just ate through all the Terminators, and Belial only has one wound left. So that's going to be a Slay the Warlord. But over here, there's probably going to be a Slay the Warlord too. And now they're off on their own, but they're going to probably go tear that Hive Tyrant a new one. And now the blood is all over the place. Molochs, one of them still off the table. And it is craziness. So right now, the score is still 1-0 for the Dark Angels because they got first blood. We'll see what happens in Dark Angels Turn 2. Dark Angels Turn 2.
Movement phase. We got to take out this Hive Tyrant. Move up to advance. Advance on this Hive Tyrant. Do it. Shooting phase. Shoot the Hive Tyrant. Shooting phase. They're going to shoot at the Hive Four shots. Three to hit with the uh, Assault Cannon. And fours to, uh, fours to wound, sixes rend. Two wounds. Two three-up armor saves. He fails. One. Two wounds left on the Hive Tyrant. Six Stormbolter shots. Threes. And sixes. Nothing. Two wounds left on him. They're going to assault him. Overwatch. Twelve shots. Twin Link. Sixes to hit. Wow. Four hits on the first wave. And sixes. That balances more out. One on the second. Two to wound. Four wounds. Five wounds. Five two-up armor saves. All okay. Distance. Enough. And... They're going to jump in. And so we'll start off on this combat because it was fun. Armagons get 14 attacks. Meaning force to hit. And force to wound. Two wounds. Two two up armor saves. <gasps> One failed. Ouch. One is dead. So they get their attacks back. They need threes to hit. Three hits. Two to wound. What? Ouch. So. Tyranids won combat somehow by killing one. Ouch. But they're fearless, so they stay in combat. This combat. Tyranid warriors attack first. Six attacks. So they need threes to hit. Nice. Fours to wound. Reroll to the toxin sacks. So fours. Three good. Two not. Reroll. All good. Five wounds. One failed. 50-50. It's him. So, one Terminator dead. Terminator gets his attacks back. Four to hit. One hit. Two to squish. One dead. Just kills a whole one out. So, Tyranids lost, but they're fearless. So they stay in combat. This combat, a lot of attacks on Belial. And... So they need fours to hit. Not a lot of hit. Of course, that was only wave one of two. And fours to wound. Two wounds on the first wave. Next wave, fours. And fours. Wow. Nine wounds. Does Belial make it? Nope. He barely died with only one wound. Belial is killed. Slay the warlord. They consolidate. One inch. So now this combat. Ouch. Tyranid war. Uh, so in this case, the good tactic is to challenge the Hive Tyrant. So it forces the first, first wound to go on the sergeant, who technically has the worst weapon. So... They challenges, and the, turn, the High Tyrant has to accept, so the challenge is there, but of course everyone gets their attacks. So, High Tyrant gets to go first, four attacks, meaning threes to hit, three hits, two to wound, three wounds, three five up in balls, two failed. So he's gonna die, and he's gonna die, leaving the fists remaining. The other nine attacks back, four to hit, yeah, he's probably dead. Two two ups to kill, yep, he's dead. And that's Slay the Warlord, again, all these distances. Four inches, and they're gonna go right for the objective. Yes. So, after Dark Angel's turn two, here's what the battlefield looks like. Can you get any quicker of a game here? This is just gone. Everything is gone. So right now, both Warlords are slain. The current score is two to one. Dark Angel's at first blood. Slay the Warlord. Technically, they have Line Breaker, too. But, uh, yeah. Tyranids have their objective over there. And Dark Angel's have their objective over there. Right now, these guys are going to have to go that way. And these guys are getting the swarmed here. And we'll see what happens. There's not a lot of bodies left on the table. And it's Tyranid's turn. So we'll see what happens in Tyranid's turn three. Tyranid's turn three. Does the Moloch come on? Nope. Start the moon phase. This Moloch's also going to go away. So they can pick on those... Um, Terminators next turn. Alright, so for tactical purposes, right now, the goal of the Tyranids, you gotta get rid of those Terminators, right? Because they're scoring their objective and they have more secondary objectives. So, right now, the Hive Guard are gonna have to move up and shoot at them, and that's it. They, they can do this turn. These Hormagons are gonna go try to save and sweep out these Terminators, since they did so many attacks, you know, maybe they'll be able to get lucky and get into combat. If it's not this turn, maybe next turn. And this many Terminators may not survive that many Hormagons. And the key is, the only problem is, though, they're running out of Synapse. So, there's not a lot of Synapse creatures left. There's just them and them. So, we'll have to keep track of Synapse. That's very important right now. So, let's move some guys. 
So first, they're gonna move up six inches to go for the high, those Terminators over there. The Venomthropes are actually gonna move back six inches because they're gonna see if they can go support them and get a bunch of attacks and maybe get lucky and kill a Terminator. And all the Hormigons are gonna turn around and see if they can get lucky, get into combat. Because if they can get into combat with that Terminator, they will kill it. And that is a happy, you know, if we can save that one tier unit warrior, that will make a huge difference to keep the synapse alive. Shooting phase, they're gonna shoot Terminator. Six shots. Um, they'll need four to hit, two hits, two is to wound, two wound, two two up armor saves. Both okay. Assault phase, they're gonna try assaulting that one Terminator. Distance, eight inches. Unfortunately, they need nine inches. So we roll, do fleet, 10. Perfect. So they actually make it their 10 inches, and they are in. They're going to block the Venom Tropes from getting in, but that's okay. Better a bunch of Hormigons getting in than Venom Tropes. We'll do this combat first. So Hormigons go first. And four is to hit. Okay. Six out of 14. Four is to wound. Nice rolling. Five wounds. Five two up armor saves. They all pass. Uh oh. Four attacks back. They need threes to hit, two hits, twos to squish, one dead. The one is killed, still fearless due to being in synapse. This is just one hilarious gong show. This combat, initiative step five, which is the warrior and all the gaunts. They pile in, at initiative step five, and get their attacks. We'll do the gaunts attacks first. Two wave of attacks out of three, fours, fours, two, no, sorry, one wave of attacks, fours. Ouch, not rolling, fours. None. And. Uh, last wave, fours, and fours, two wounds, three armor saves, and he fails. That's all it took, Terminator's dead. Terminator killed, and D6 consolidation. Warrior, four inches, and Parmigans, four inches. This combat, so, after Tyranids, turn three. Here's what the battlefield looks like. So that was a pretty uneventful turn other than the one Terminator getting killed. So they consolidate towards the next one, they're gonna swarm them the next turn. And essentially, these guys are going to have to move up that way because they got to go for the line breaker and go contest that objective. This objective is pretty much safe. It is. Of course, there's two Molochs coming on next turn. So we'll see what happens in Dark Angels. Turn three. Dark Angels, turn three. Dark Angels, they're going to move towards the objective. Three inches. Just... Go grab that objective in case, but spread out because the Moloch is coming. Shooting, they'll shoot. Hive guard. Four assault cannon shots. Three hit. Four is to wound. Six is rend. One wound. Four storm ultra shots. Threes. And fours. One wound. Four up armor. He's okay. Assault phase. Home guns go first. Six. First wave. Attacks. Fours. And fours. Two wounds. And next fours, and fours, nothing. So two wounds total. Two, two of armor saves. One failed. Not good job, Terminator. And that one's dead. The Terminator attacks back with two attacks, threes, one hit. I'm predicting a tight combat. Or we're not. So the six Hormigons are weakling that one Terminator, one Terminator left. Wow. So, Dark Angels, turn three was very quick. These next turns are going to be pretty quick. This combat, one Terminator died, didn't kill anything back. So, and then next turn, all these Hormigons are going to jump in and probably finish him off. Or maybe I'll let him, uh, maybe I'll let those six kill him. That'd be kind of fun, and then I'll move up with the rest of them, because these guys can actually go that way pretty quickly. And if he survives and happens to win, so be it. I think it's worth the risk. Venom Thrope's going to move up, and uh, their, their turns of their objective secured right now, and... Uh, so do the Dark Angels, but there's still three mo two Molochs coming next turn, so we'll see what happens in Tyranids, turn four. Tyranids, turn four. So the Moloch is going to come in right here, trying to land on all three. Where does it end up? Hits. That's not good for them. So three, two up, uh, so two to wound. Two wounds. Two five up involves. One pass, one fail. Closest is dead. Moloch cannot be placed. Hits again. Two to wound. Two wounds, and two, uh, five up minimal. One pass, one failed. Closest, dead. 
And the Moloch has arrived. Moloch is gonna try to land center on that objective, right there, so it hits him, but not the other Moloch. Scatters off the table. So he scatters off the table, and what happens on the sub table? A five, comes back next turn. So after that, we're gonna call it here. Well, I'm gonna call it here, because basically this one Terminator will not be able to kill a Moloch. Six wounds, he only does two attacks a turn, he, the odds are he's not going to kill it before it kills him. And there's another Moloch off the table. He's not going to do with both of them. And on top of that, then that one Terminator is not going to stand up to all of those guys. They'll kill him. So that's about it. In the end, I think it's pretty much callable. Because the Tyranids have that objective secured. And once they just kill that one guy, uh, they, it's a tie. But I don't think either Terminator is going to survive. So it's okay. And we'll call it here. It is a Tyranid victory. Because in the end, the Tyranids just swarmed them, and uh, yeah, no point really continuing. So, good game, and we'll see you in the post game.